and welcome to our IPC 144 uh, very sort of condensed video lecture on library functions. There's not really a lot of theory behind library functions. Uh, the main idea is, you know, kind of, I mean, we've kind of been using library functions since day one, right? We've been using uh, scanf and printf, and as you know, you know, uh, those uh, functions, we didn't, we didn't write those functions. Those functions come from a library called stdio.h, right? So we've always been having to use that pound include stdio.h, right? And so similar to that, there's other libraries that are available, right? And then, so the, the section on library functions actually covers uh, some of the more important ones in the uh, C libraries, right? And um, so we're just going to quickly run through, you know, where to find, you know, different kinds of functions uh, and, um, you know, when, when, you, when you need them, right? So you can have a look at this section whenever you um, want to look up um, different functions to do things. Uh, and this, uh, what we're going to talk about today, we're going to do some examples of using library functions, and this will be useful for your workshop that will come up, right? Uh, your workshop that will come up, right? This is the section on library functions and event um, either this week, this coming week uh, after break or the week after, you'll be doing uh, the workshop on library functions. So um, first up, I guess, are the mathematical functions. Um, many of the one, many of the mathematical mathematical functions that deal with integers. So for example, uh, there's the absolute value function here, right? Um, you can you know look up on, for example, what, you know if you're not familiar with what uh, the absolute value means, right? For mathematics, it basically means that if you have a uh, number, um, if, if the number is negative, you're basically just throwing away the sign, right? So it tur basically turns uh, negative numbers into positive numbers and it leaves positive numbers alone. If there's any confusion, you can definitely look up on Wikipedia, right? You can just simply Google Wikipedia uh, absolute value, value, right? So here I'm just using Google. Uh, and, you know, we could just always follow this link and you can read up to your heart's content on absolute value. Um, it's sort of assumed that you have basic math knowledge entering this course, right? So uh, basically the idea here is, is if you, if you wanted to find the absolute value of some integer, right? Here's an example uh, of, of, uh, of using that, right? Of using those um, uh, absolute value functions that you can copy and paste into Nano and run them and try them, right? But the, the point is here is that you, you in, in, in addition to stdio.h, you also need to include stdlib.h, right? Because the, these, these absolute value functions uh, belong to this library, okay? Um, you know, so um, another sort of very important um, type of thing that is in stdlib.h, in addition to uh, mathematical functions, right? I guess ra generating random numbers would be uh, one uh, application or one type of uh, mathematical function. Right, so we can just briefly talk about those. Um, the idea of a random number sort of is, you know, if you're if you're thinking about say rolling, uh, you know, playing playing a board game, right? Such so as you know, Monopoly would be an example of one. Risk would be another one that's very famous, right? Or these days, there's also Settlers of uh, of Catan, right? So um, you know, the idea of rolling dice, right? Rolling rolling dice on the board is an example of uh, you know, sort of generating random numbers, right? So computers are very good at sort of following. Uh, steps exactly, right? Uh, their computers, uh, the type of computers that we, we have today are not classically good at coming up with random numbers. So what happened is people developed libraries in order to develop, uh, it started to generate random numbers. And um, they're actually pseudo-random, right? Pseudo-random means not really truly random. They just appear to be random if someone's just looking at the output on the screen, um, right? And the main function that we accomplish that with is this so-called rand function and the rand function again comes from stdlib.h okay so some of the examples here of using rand are uh so so what what this uh example would do right is this would print out 10 random numbers to the screen but um one of the things uh, um uh you know so we, what you could do if you want is you can just copy and paste this into nano and run it and get a feel for that but one of the things that we would we, we would notice here though is if we if we ran it, right? One of the things I want to point out is that um, 
when you know when you're developing a program like you will in your workshop you're going to be developing a program uh, that that uh, that rolls dice right it's going to be it's going to be a game of dice uh, and um, so um, you're going to be using this rand function there so I just kind of want to show you a little bit about how to use it so in this again you can do you can do the same exercise at home right by just taking that code from the from the example on rand and pasting it into a function so I'm just going to or sorry pasting it into a program so I'm just going to use my my nano uh, you know text editor tool here and say uh, nano random dot c right I'll just make a simple c file I'm going to paste that code in here and we can actually check run it and see what what the output is so I'm just I'm going to save it. I'm going to compile it. GCC random dot C. Okay, no, shouldn't be any errors there. Okay, great. So I'm just going to run it. Right, and we see that you know it's going to generate ten random numbers for us. Right, so these are numbers that uh, that are between uh, a um, you know a certain range. Um, and I'll, I'll in the following following example, you know, uh, we can show how to get how to change this. Right, so that that the numbers. Uh, fall within uh, any any range we want. But the first thing I want to point out is is that every time we run this program, you're going to see we get the same set of ten numbers out, right? And this is actually useful for when while we're developing our program, right? We don't want it to behave differently every time, right? We may not necessarily want to see different random numbers pop out, right? But if we want the program to, to show a different set of numbers each time we run it, we have to make one change to this program. And again, this the same information is covered just down here in the notes where it talks about srand, right? So srand is another function that uh, will, depending on what you pass here, depending on what you pass as an argument to srand, it's going to give you a different sort of series of random numbers. And, and the behavior we would like now is every time we run the program, we would like a different set of random numbers to come out there, right? And so the way you accomplish that is you 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 uh, pass at srand the current time, right? The, so every time you run the program, it's going to be a different time because you know time time kind of marches forward in, in real life, right? So th there's this function called time that gets from the system clock what the current time is, and the, and you know so every moment the time is going to change. So the idea here is that we are going to modify our program. So I'm going to go back into nano here. And then I got to do two things. So this time function uh, it belongs to a library called uh, time.h. Include, uh, and it's just called time.h, right? And so that's where we're going to get it from. And we're going to modify this program to add sran. So here I'm going to say sran, right? And then I'm going to pass inside here time, right? And then uh, and then I, I basically initialize it with uh, with uh, with null there. That's what that that's what that zero is for. So we can actually change that to the same null. It's the same meaning. Okay. So now what's going to happen is is I've got here you notice I've added sran. So maybe what I'll do is actually I'll just cancel out of here. Right, and this so here I'll add a comment here, and I'll just say um, you know just to explain this is this ensures this this next line ensures that we get a different set of numbers each time right and, and and so this this line down here right this line down here is the one that actually uh, you know generates those random numbers by calling the rand function so now if we see if I compile this and run it again I'm going to compile it and then run it uh, run that out right we're going to see that you know the, the set of random numbers that I got this time, is different than 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 the time I did before than the time I did before, right? And then we see if I if I run the program again that this new set of numbers, right, uh, is different than than the previous time I ran it. So every time I actually run this program now, I'm going to get a different, basically set of ten numbers out. Okay. The last thing I want to say about Rand is how to use it in order to get you know, a different kind of range of numbers. Here we're, we're getting kind of huge numbers, right? But if you look ahead to your workshop that's coming up, you basically have to generate numbers between, say, 1 and 6, right? So I won't show you exactly how to do that, but I will show you how you can generate a number between, um, let's say, let's say in our example, we want to generate uh, a random number between, uh, uh, let's say, 1 and 100. 
or let's you know make that, let's make that maybe a little bit simpler. Let's make it between one and ten. Okay, so we're going to generate a number between one and ten here. So uh, one of the things I have to do, or one of the things I can do, to do that would be uh, so so here is our is our call to rand, and rand is going to return an integer. So maybe a better thing I can do here would be to, I'm going to temporarily store that result in a, in a variable. So here I'll just say int, and I'll, here I'll call it temp rand. And maybe I'll just call it temp. Let's call it temp just to be simple, right? And and so what I'll do is just get onto the next line here, and here I will write uh, temp is equal to, and I'm going to call my rand function here, and this is going to get me a random number, and uh, and I'm going to store that number in temp, right? And then here instead of calling rand here, here I'm just going to print out the value of my variable temp. Okay, so just we can quickly verify that my program is working correctly, that we should see the same uh, behavior, right? We should still, uh, we're getting random number 11 printed out. What the heck did I do wrong? Let's take a look here. Uh, oops, let's go back in here, right? It's only printing out uh, 11. And why, why would that be? Um, wow, why would it do that? Why? It prints out just number 11. Hmm. Why would that be? Oh, classic mistake, right? Because the code example I pasted uh, is, um, that's cute, uh, is it's sort of that classic mistake I said, is I say, you know what, whenever you have a for loop, right, always have the opening and closing braces there. In this, in this example that they pasted, they did not have the opening and closing brace, so I made the mistake of pasting another line, and I expected that it was part of my for loop. Right? So what I need to do is, just as always, I need to enclose all of the statements that I want to be executed inside the for loop, meaning these two statements need to be inside opening and closing braces. So I should have paid attention to that. And that's the reason I make that suggestion. If you always use the braces, then it's always explicit what is inside uh, you know your 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 loop. Okay, so so now this should solve that problem, right? We're gonna go gcc random dot c. We're doing this all in one take. You notice, uh, and then here we can run uh, our um, got out. We can run our, uh, our our program, and 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 again, you know, it behaves the same way it did before, right? Where we're getting ten random numbers printed out. Okay, and what accomplishes that is here all I have done is I've added this temp variable that's just holding our random number for a moment before we print it out. And the reason I'm doing that is so that I can modify it, right? So how can we chop the, the range of this number? You'll notice that it's printing out these really large numbers, right? Because it goes between uh, zero and this, uh, this um, uh, value called rand max, right? Which we're not gonna get into right now. But the way we can sort of chop down that range into something smaller is we can use our uh, trusty uh, mod operator. So here I'm going to say temp is equal to temp mod 10. And you remember that the, the point of our program right now here, I'll just sort of list it in here, is I'm going to say, is I'm going to say uh, this program will print out 10 random numbers between uh, 0 and, sorry, 1 and 10, right? So uh, so what I'm going to do here is if I use the modulus operator, right, this is going to give us the remainder of whatever temp is. So temp is going to be this big long number, and we're going to divide that by 10, right, and then only take the remainder of that. So this is guaranteed to get us a number between, um, my guess is between 0 and 9. So let's test out whether it's doing what I think it's doing right now. We're sort of taking steps, right? I'm not doing it all in one big step. I'm making small changes to my program and, uh, and, and testing what's happening, right? So it's, it's easier to develop that way, right? So here I run it, and you'll notice that this time I ran it. I didn't get any zeros. I did get a bunch of nines, right? So I, I'm just testing how things are going. So I got, um, you know, I got uh, nine is the highest number. One is the lowest number. Uh, still we're getting uh, between uh, one and nine. I'm, I'm pretty certain we can get zeros here. Yes, we can. This, this time I ran the program, right? And we got some zeros, right? So right now I've never gotten a 10 yet. Right, and 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 if and if we look, right, if we, you you know that when we divide, well, you know when we when we divide by a number, right, that number can never be the remainder, right. So that's why we're not getting, uh, we're not getting um, uh, numbers between one and ten. 
we're actually getting numbers between 0 and 9. So what we can do to fix that up, right? So if you want to just pause the video for a second and think about the answer of how we can switch our uh, program from giving us uh, numbers between 0 and 9 to giving us numbers between 1 and 10. I'll let you pause and think about that for a moment. Um, but the way we can actually do that is um, is is, is uh, if we just add 1 to the result here, right, that's going to switch our range from 0 to 9, right? So if we get a 0, we're going to add 1 to that, giving us 1. And if we get a 9, we add, we add 1, and that gives us 10, right? So now this version of the program should more or less do the trick. So here I'm going to compile it uh, and then run it, right? And then here now we see we're getting numbers between 1 and 10. Okay, so that's uh, I'm going to be posting this example code on uh, on Blackboard along with this posting, so you can you can download it and, and, and check it out. And then what I want to do is I just want to run through the remaining um, parts of this section on um, on library functions. Okay, so we were just finished talking about Rand. Right? Um, there's, there's basically other mathematical uh, uh, functions that are available in uh, this, um, this math.h uh, library. But one thing you'll notice with GCC, and this kind of throws a lot of people off, and threw me off at first for that matter too, is you have to, when you're using GCC, so following the name of your program, you have to use this dash lm uh, option, or else for some reason it will not work out. I'm not sure what, what the reason for that is, but just remember that if you're using GCC, and you're trying to use functions from the math library, math.h, you need to uh, basically be um, compiling with this dash lm flag, okay? So we've already talked about earlier, right? Earlier in this video lecture, I talked about the absolute value function, right? And what it does, but you'll notice that in the, in, and then the you know, absolute value function came from this std lib.h, and it only operates on integers, right? You'll notice that integers and longs and long longs, but not floating point types, right? So for floating point types, we uh, we have to use the floating point absolute value functions that that belong in in math.h. Okay, so these these all correspond to those absolute value functions on ints, except they operate on double and float and and these types. Okay, so there's other mathematical functions here like floor, right? That that sort of rounds a number down. Ceiling rounds a number up always. Round you know, rounds a number the way you kind of would expect math, uh, you know, it, it to work in sort of regular old math. You can sort of review these examples at length. I'm just sort of walking through what functions are available, right, for you. Um, there's truncation, square root is here, right, if you need to take the square root of a number, you can do that. Um, you remember in the workshop on future value, you implemented your own power function, right, but now we're sort of taking the training wheels off, and, uh, and in the future, if you need to you know, uh, raise a number to the power of another number, you can just go ahead and use pow, right, that, that, that lives in the math.h library. So here's an example of how pow works. You can, uh, you know, paste it into a, a terminal and run it. Uh, also, if you need to take uh, logarithms of numbers, right, here you got, you got, the, you got some log functions, right, to take the, the natural log. Uh, if you need to exponentiate something, right, to, to um, the powers of e, you, get, you have the uh, exp function, um, time functions uh, sometimes are handy. We've already seen uh, time uh, null used in order to uh, get the current system time, right, with, with uh, relation to SRAND earlier. Um, so this will, this will get us the time, uh, the current time. Um, you, can, you can check out this example here, right, you can, you can copy and paste this example to, um, to test it out, and this will show that uh, this is, using this code, you can find the elapsed time, right, since the, between the time your program started and your program ended. Um, other functions, right, will tell you the process time, basically how long your program has been running. Again, you can, you can um, you know, copy and paste that example to run it. Uh, and then there's also a whole bunch of character manipulation functions, which, um, you know, are in the C type .h library. Uh, and, um, you know, uh, you can basically you can use them to make uh, uppercase characters lowercase and lowercase characters uppercase, and um, you know these functions you, you're probably not going to really be using for your uh, assignments, uh, to be honest. So the, the probably the most important one here to sort of study up on uh, for your upcoming workshop is the is the rand function, 
and you can go ahead and try that example that I, that I pasted on Blackboard. Um, try that out in preparation for your workshop. Okay, so um, we'll see you in class this week. Um,